Let's deflect an asteroid. I've been playing Spaceflight Simulator and I wanted to recreate a real mission, the Double Asteroid Redirection Test, or DART, at least as much as I could in a game. I did this in the free version of the game and without cheats. Just quickly, most of you watching aren't subscribed, so please consider subscribing if you enjoy this video as that does help me out a lot. The DART mission involved impacting the small moon of the asteroid Didymos with a spacecraft to assess whether we could meaningfully change its orbit. If we ever wanted to deflect an asteroid, that would be pretty important. This was the first and only time we've actually tried to change an asteroid's orbit. In Spaceflight Simulator, we have a second, smaller natural satellite orbiting the Earth in addition to the Moon called the Captured Asteroid. I wanted to try and impact this body, then return to Earth with a sample, which would combine the impact of the DART mission with the sample return aspect of the Hayabusa 1 and 2 missions and the Osiris-Rex mission. Asteroids are relatively small, but they still have a lot of mass and momentum. A tiny spacecraft hitting it, even at high speeds, isn't going to change its orbit by much. But space is huge, so even changing its orbit by a small amount could cause a threatening asteroid to miss us if we do that early enough. The general idea behind this is hopefully pretty intuitive. If we try and deflect it the day before it hits Earth, we'd need a lot more energy to do that than if we just wanted to nudge it a year in advance. Now the asteroid in this game isn't actually on a collision course with Earth, and you physically can't change the orbit of the asteroid in the game, but it is a useful demonstration of how we might do this in real life. So when we impact the asteroid, I'm going to take the mass and speed of the spacecraft and see how much momentum we imparted on the asteroid. In my PhD thesis, I discussed a simplified formula developed by Chesley and Spa in 2004 to see how much momentum you'd need to move an asteroid by one Earth radius given a certain amount of lead time, where T is the number of years before impact in this equation. The one Earth radius is relevant here, because if an asteroid is going to hit Earth, you can imagine it's going to intersect the cross-section of Earth somewhere, so you just have to speed it up or slow it down by enough to move it one Earth radius in any direction for it to miss. No matter where the asteroid intersects this cross-section, the most it has to be moved is one Earth radius, or one Earth diameter if you don't know what direction it's going. Now as I said, this formula is a simplified representation of what will happen. It's no substitute for actually calculating the trajectory of the asteroid after impact, and frankly, if we actually had to deflect an asteroid, we'd be doing a much more sophisticated analysis than what I'm doing here. But for our purposes, it does give us a rough sense of what might happen in this situation. The mass of this part of the spacecraft is 6.5 tons dry, but it had about one third of its propellant remaining. So it was roughly 20 tons total mass at the time of impact. And it was traveling at 190 meters per second relative to the asteroid. So its relative momentum was 3.8 million kilogram meters per second. Now, we need to know the mass of the asteroid, which is 200 meters in diameter, or 100 meters in radius. Assuming it's a perfect sphere, which granted it's not, and assuming it's an S-type asteroid, or stony, as most near-Earth asteroids are, its mass would be 1.2564 times 10 to the 10 kilograms. So now that we know its mass and change in momentum, putting this back into the momentum equation gives us its change in velocity, which would be 0.0003 meters per second. So we barely slowed it down. But would that be enough to deflect the asteroid from hitting Earth if it were, say, one year away? Going back to Chesley and Spa's equation, the change of velocity required to alter an asteroid's trajectory by one Earth radius after one year would be 0.035 meters per second. We changed the velocity by 0.0003 meters per second, so that's just under 1% of the velocity required. So if we wanted to move it by one Earth radius with this exact spacecraft at this exact speed, we'd have to make impact 117 years in advance, or have it impact a lot faster. I have to reiterate again that this is simplified, and may be off by as much as an order of magnitude, so it could be 11, or it could be 1170 years in advance. It's also further complicated by the fact that the transfer of momentum when impacting porous bodies is up to 100 times, or two orders of magnitude, less efficient, depending on how porous it is, and asteroids can be porous. So the overall picture this is painting is that deflecting an asteroid requires a lot of energy. If we're going to deflect one using the kinetic approach, which is a fancy way of saying we'll hit it with something, we'd either need something bigger, faster, or more realistically, lots of spacecraft. I made a video on some of the other ways that we could deflect an asteroid, which you'll find at the top right of your screen. So on the way back to Earth, I realized I forgot to add a heat shield and a parachute to my probe. Rather than restarting, I decided to challenge myself to land on Earth regardless by error braking as much as possible and then using the remaining propellant to land. Error braking means using the atmosphere of the planetary body, Earth in this case, to slow your velocity and change your orbit, saving propellant. 
Some of the Mars missions used aerobraking to enter a Mars orbit and reduce their velocity to save propellant. Now, normally you'd do this with a heat shield. In my case, I had to keep rotating my spacecraft so that while one side was cooking, the other side was cooling down. This wouldn't work in real life, so I was abusing the physics of the game a little. After 30 minutes of aerobraking, I finally made my final approach, but the heat was too much and my poor little spacecraft disintegrated along with my asteroid sample. Space is hard.